So Ruth, I feel very honored because I am playing a duet with someone who's played with some very important people in the past. Can you tell us about your experience of playing a duet with President Truman? Yes, I was supposed to play a concert in Constitution Hall on a Saturday afternoon and arrived at my hotel Mayflower the night before, Friday night, and hung up my dress and got my music out so that early Saturday morning I could go to Constitution Hall and practice, play my concert in the afternoon, and hopefully go home to New York that night. So anyway, it was just a planned short visit. And when I got up to my room in the Mayflower, I got a telephone call, and it was very mysterious. Some gentleman asked, and what are your plans for tomorrow morning? And I said, well, I expect to go to Constitution Hall and practice toward my concert. And he said, well, my colleague and I are going to pick you up at 9.30 tomorrow morning in the lobby, so be prepared with your dress and music, and we'll take you. So I said, fine. And that next morning, there I was, 9.30 in the morning, with my dress over my arm and my music and a briefcase, all ready to go to Constitution Hall. And these two gentlemen stepped on each side of me and took my elbows, and we went forward into this gorgeous black limousine that had a American flag on the, one of its fenders flying a small American flag. I remember that about it. And I said, this is quite something, but I thought that Constitution Hall was just a little ways from here. They told me when I uh, booked the hotel room, you could practically walk there, but I have things to carry, and so maybe a car is better. And they said, well, we're we have to make a stop first before we go to Constitution Hall. I said, oh, where? And they said, well, you will see. We are not at liberty to talk too much about it. So I kind of looked at them and said, what is happening here? And pretty soon I saw, hey, that's the White House there. And the car turned in to the driveway toward the White House, and it passed the front part of the building and went around to the back and inside of me my head said uh oh somebody wants me to play because an artist always goes in the back door you never go in the front door like everybody else so we went in the back door and everybody there seemed to know about these two gentlemen they took me to an elevator and we went upstairs, and then they walked me to a little room, made sure that I was comfortable. I said, but there's no piano, and I have to practice. And they said, oh, we'll look on you, uh, and pretty soon you will have a piano in front of you. Don't worry about that. And they brought me a cup of coffee, and I said, I can't have coffee. So I said, tea, maybe? So they brought me a cup of tea, and they brought me a sweet roll. And 20 minutes later, they looked in on me. No, you have to stay here. We don't know how long, but what we hope will happen may or may not happen, so we can't talk about it. So I said, what's so mysterious? I said, oh, you will find out if it happens. So I waited and waited. And they looked in at me every 20 minutes, and I said, I need to practice. I need to practice. I have a concert this afternoon. And they said, oh, just have patience. Sit down. It may happen pretty soon. And then the, they came. 
took me each fight. Now, they said we have to walk quickly because we can't waste any time. Every second counts. So they walked me and through these hallways, and I looked right and left and right and left at the inside of the White House to see as much as I could. And they said, you can look all you want afterwards. Right now, we have something we have to do quickly. So we went, and pretty soon we arrived at a double door, and there was a Marine in full uniform on each side, and there was an American flag above the door, and somebody opened both doors, and there was, I couldn't believe it, the President of the United States, President Harry Truman, coming toward me with his hand, shake my hand, and he said, oh, I'm so happy that this is possible. We only have a few minutes. He said, but I have been practicing. And he opened the lid of a piano bench that was sitting in front of a small grand piano by the window. And he said, I have been practicing the slow movement of a Mozart sonata. He said, of course, you play the top part. And I said, how fast do you want me to play this? And he hummed a little bit. And he said, wait just a minute. And he pressed all these buttons on his desk and all the secretaries and people came rushing into the office. And then we sat down and we played the slow movement of a uh, Mozart sonata. He played very well. He was a fine pianist. He had wanted to be a professional pianist at one time in his life. So he played well, and he was very musical to boot. And you also played a duet with uh, a very important person in Japan before, too, right? <laughs> yes, Her Imperial Majesty, Michiko of Japan, was a trained uh, pianist. She loved to play the piano and still does. At every occasion, she practices the piano. And she was the only person in my whole life, my professional life, that when we played four hands, she played the top part. She played the primo. And <laughs> I played secundo. I was kind of surprised, but uh, I'm a good reader. And of course, I had played those four shock dances before, but uh, the other voice, of course. She's a marvelous person. She was doing this because I played some benefit concerts for the people in Japan who had suffered from uh, tsunamis uh, in the northern part of Japan. The weather had been terrible, and the water uh, covered much of, of the ground where they lived, and they couldn't live in their homes until uh, help came. And it was a very dangerous and bad situation, and I played concerts to help those people who were thrown out of their homes by the weather. And she, this was her way of saying thank you to me. But she liked playing with me, because now every time I go to Japan, she <laughs> asks, about me and what I am going to play, and uh, she asked me to the palace. And you have tea with the the empress, right? Well, yes. She, the, she had a tea party for me after my afternoon concert in Tokyo, and they served this amber liquid that was being poured into little glasses. And I thought, good heavens. This is a little bit strange. I better find out what is this amber liquid. Uh, and uh, I asked one of the people who were pouring, I said, what is this? And the empress was saying to everybody, I hope you enjoy your drinks. I have them specially brought in here for you. And uh, it was pomegranate juice. Pomegranate juice. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Wonderful. <laughs> yeah. And... Uh, 
Let's see, how many other presidents have you been involved with in some way? Oh, all my life long. It started with uh, President Hoover when I was just five uh, years old. And uh, at that time, Mr. Hoffman, Joseph Hoffman, invited me as a student at Curtis Institute. And he and my father just didn't get along. My father was not a friendly type. And so that didn't last very long. And then I played at Stanford University when I was about 12. And Mr. Hoover remembered the strange name Slenchinsky and invited me to dinner after my afternoon concert at Stanford. And so there I was. And at that time, I was a typical kid interested in conundrums, which I collected. I loved to ask riddles, conundrums. And one of the conundrums that I had uh, picked especially for Mr. Hoover was the question, what is every president of the United States? So I came up with this. I have a question for you, Mr. President. He said, what is that? What is every president of the United States? Mr. Hoover said, what do you mean, darn fools? And I said, not necessarily. <laughs> they're cabinet makers. <laughs> <laughs> and there were a lot of nice happy laughter, and it got into uh, the newspapers, and uh, that was my first president of the United States that I met, was President Herbert Hoover. Wonderful. Then I met several presidents after that. I met, uh, I played at the Kennedy inauguration, and so I met, uh, Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy, I have a thank you note from them for having played at the inauguration, signed by both Mr. and Mrs. Kennedy. And uh, I have a thank, I have a congratulatory note from President Reagan uh, uh, for celebrating my 50th anniversary as a concertizing American artist, born in the States, trained in the States, and teaching in the States, and uh, working in the States as a professional. It was a, a, a wonderful letter that began, Nancy and I want to congratulate you. <laughs> it was a big thrill to be invited to the White House after that, because President Reagan was the only Republican president I ever voted for. <laughs> <laughs> and what I can tell you about that experience at that time, Mrs. Reagan met us. She was a sweet, charming lady, Nancy. And uh, she said, speak up when you speak to the president because his hearing is not as good as it used to be. And so we all remembered to do that. Ahead of me, in the line to meet him was a famous actor that I remembered from the screen, James Stewart. Who was it? James Stewart. Mm -hmm. And so he was ahead of me, and he went up. He stretched out his hand. He said, hello, Mr. President. And <laughs> the president poked him, and he said, don't you, Mr. President, me. <laughs> <laughs> After all the work we've done together. <laughs> oh, he was a charmer. He was just wonderful. So I have a congratulations letter from him. I played at that luncheon there. They have several nice big pianos at the White House. Steinway has seen to that. Did you meet uh, Jimmy Carter? Oh, yes. Well, Jimmy Carter came from uh, 
Georgia, and my sister Helen lived in Georgia at that time, and she worked in some government office, and he passed through and talked to her on some mornings when she was there, and she had a chance to tell him that her sister was a concert pianist. And so after he was elected president, he came in one time and before he was in the White House, and he told her that he and his wife were moving to the White House, and my sister said, you must remember to invite my sister, who's a concert pianist, to play. And he remembered my sister talking about me and got the, the information and invited me to play at a luncheon. So I have a picture of Jimmy and Rosalind Carter walking in the Rose Garden. Uh, we were surrounded by people at that time, and there was a photographer walking backwards, taking pictures of us. And at one point, he handed several of these pictures to the president, and uh, the president looked at them and handed me one of those pictures, and that's the picture that I have with the Carters. It was taken at a luncheon at, at the Rose Garden of the White House. So, and Mrs. Obama? Oh, I never met President Obama. But Mrs. Obama, I met in the most curious fashion. When I lived in the Midwest, I played several concerts to raise money for the uh, ne Negro College Fund. And uh, there were several black churches in uh, the... Illinois area, and I played at this one and at that one. Wherever my uh, students recommended, this one would go to this church, so I'd play a concert there, and then I played at that church. And so evidently, somebody from one of those churches uh, thought it would be a good idea when I left the Midwest to go to New York to tell somebody who worked and a uh, doorbell rang, and there was this beautiful black lady there, and she said, we got this letter from the Midwest that you played piano concerts to raise money for the Negro College Fund, and we have churches here. Would you be willing? And I said, of course. I said, she, so she said, well, we located one church that had a fairly good piano in it, and it was on 137th Street in New York. And uh, so she took me there, and I tried the piano. I said, this is okay. Just get it tuned up. I can play you a, a concert on this piano, sure. So I did, and she brought her two little girls at that time, and they were the sweetest things. She showed me a picture of her handsome husband, who was at that time a senator from Illinois. And uh, so at Christmas time, she sent me this uh, Christmas card, which I have now, a picture of the whole Obama family, including th the president. But at that time, he wasn't president. president. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wonderful. So it's a pre-presidential Card, Christmas card that I have from the Obamas. Yes, so you have a wonderful history of, of our American government as well as throughout the world, so that's mm -hmm. exciting.